Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom from Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers.com, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, coming to you live from my Seattle apartment again. Look at that. Wow. Got the Pearlocopter going there for all the subscribers that have been subscribing to my channel to bring you your Pearls of Wisdom necklace. And is is NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces. And uh, we have two of the finest in the land here. We have uh, Peyton from uh, Peyton on the radio. I almost said off the wall. That's John. Peyton <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> and we have Joe from Sports Fanatic News and Steel Flyers Network that we are all part together with. Um, and uh, we have been doing a fantastic series of every team in the league and how they did in their offseason and how it projects for their future. And we have been doing it in... Um, Perlo, Perlo style alphabetical order, which is alphabetical ish. And Very today, wacky alphabetical order. Yeah. And today we're going way off the board because we last did uh, Minnesota and now we're doing Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> and it, it, it's because there's no rules here at Perlo Wisdom Industry, there's no actual rules. And we just wanted to do it because Tampa's in the news right now. They just did a fantastic signing, which we'll talk about right right away. But thank you, Peyton, for coming on. How's everything going with you in the Calgary there, buddy? Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, I've been busy with school. The weather is a bit chilly today, but it's been uh, pretty damn good. How about you? How's it been down there in uh, the Seattle apartments? <laughs> well, funny thing, my Seattle apartment is in Alberta, Canada. <laughs> And it's plus five right now. Wow. So, yeah, not bad. Now, is it, it's, it's cold in Calgary, really? Yeah, well, I usually have my windows open, but today I just I can't have them open today. It's really chilly out. I'm freezing my feet off, and it, it's just been really chilly down here for some reason today. And especially last night, it's made my room super cold. I had to wow. wake up and shut it. It, it was a crazy about, morning. I think you might have the humidity over there talking about that. There's a Probably. little bit of that stuff that goes on in Philadelphia, where my friend here, Joe Pro, Pro Joe, Pro Joe, Pro Joe, Professor Joe from www.steelflyers.com and Sports Fanatic News. How's it going there in the Philadelphia, my friend? Uh, the weather temperature-wise has been pretty good. It has got overcast and cloudy in our area uh, right now, so I don't know if there is going to be any rain, but it is very overcast. Uh, but it has been in the low. Uh, Fahrenheit wise, 50 uh, degrees. So oh. pretty solid. Yeah. I, um, killed, and then it goes, this 50. is the time of year that when it gets really warm, it kind of gets cold at night and then it goes back up. So we've been having pretty, for the most part, warmer days uh, than usual. Uh, we had a, a very high Thanksgiving. I think it was the highest in a couple of years in terms of temperature. Jeez. That's yeah. that. We kill for a 50 here. Okay, let's get into the Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, we might as well just start off with the latest news because that's what everybody in the land is interested in. Sergachev. Everybody's been wondering, what are they going to do with this cap space? That's the number one thing. Secondly, we'll talk about Sergachev, the signing, what that means for them. And I'm going to start off with Peyton here. How did you like the contract to begin with? And how do you think it's going to work? for their salary cap in the next little while, if you can keep that under. <laughs> um, Mikhail Shurgachev, I, I like the signing. He's a young 22-year-old. You get him on a nice bridge deal for the last next three years, which we've been seeing that a lot with Rope Hints. We've seen it with Gurionov. We've seen it with a lot of these young players who have been getting bridge deals, especially these uh, RFAs right now, um, especially in this COVID world that we're in. Getting into these cheap three-year deals will help you out. Um, because you never know when the economy will go back up. So uh, Mikhail Shurgachev also had a great playoffs. Um, it's going to be a perfect contract for them. Now, the thing that sucks, Tampa Bay is already over the cap. You got lots of players like Kilroy, Johnson, uh, Garou, uh, Palat taking up a lot of your money. I don't know who they're going to be trading off. They tried to put Tyler Johnson down in waivers to see if anyone would pick him up. No one picked him up. He's not a hot commodity right now. And it looks like a lot of teams really don't want to help the Tampa Bay Lightning out. It seems like they were screwed over by Stevie Eiserman too much. So they're now saying to Tampa Bay, like, no, don't we're not taking any of your garbage players off our plate. 
Um, so it, it's it's going to be a sticky situation for Brisbane, but I don't know if they're going to be able to come out of it. We've seen it before with these Stanley Cup hangovers where it just kind of kind of thorns them in the side and then salary really kicks in. So you might see some pretty bad deals for the first time in a long time with Tampa Bay Lightning, I feel. Um, I feel like they're going to definitely probably make a panic move and trade away somebody that is a key part of their team just to make room for salary cap for Sorelli and Cernak. So we'll have to see what the Tampa Bay Lightning do. Um, they seem like they're in a really sticky situation. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a sticky situation. Do you see any solution there, Pro Projo, on uh, things that they might be able to do to get, to get them uh, cap cap uh, coherent? That's not the word. You compliant. Know, you know the word. There yeah, we compliant. go. Compliant. Yeah, compliant. Coherent. Yeah. Coherent. <laughs> compliant. Okay, Joe. Oh. You you talk because I obviously yeah. Um, well, obviously. Uh, one way is continuing to get your younger players on these ridiculous bridge deals and then figuring out how to trade the older ones. I mean, it's not really the worst situation to be in because you just won a Stanley Cup. And the reason you're not in a worst type situation is because you've already done this in the past. Like, realistically, a couple of years ago, before their lineup got more and more stacked, Tyler Johnson was producing at a rate that $5 million wasn't even... Bad, like a bad contract for Tyler Johnson, where now that might be a, even or a little bit much just because he's kind of buried in their lineup, not really because of his uh, skill set. Um, and then you have guys like Braden Point who took the six seven five. If they had him take what he's worth, they would have been in much worse situation now. So if they're continuing to able to have this good culture of their young guys taking less, that'll help their cap over time. The problem is now, even if Cernok and Sorelli want to take those nice team-friendly deals, you still can't give them to them until you move. Uh, you would hope, I think, for the Lightning, they're hoping that's the $5 million of Johnson. But since it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to do that, the one guy behind me, I don't know if people can see him as I slide over, but Palat could be one guy that has to get forced to go who they really uh, like on that team because he gets 5-3. And then the other option could be a guy that I know for a fact they definitely don't want to trade, who would be part of, like you just said, Pirlo, getting rid of a big part of the court would be Yanni Gord, who they gave a contract in 2024-25. That would be a guy you would really have to bite the bullet. I don't think Tampa wants to give him up at all, but that's 5-1-6 off your cap, and you would have to find a way to replace that. But that would help some of your issues, and that would be the one you really have to bite the bullet for. I see their secondary being, for me personally, I don't know how you guys feel, but if they can't trade Tyler Johnson, it's going to go probably Alex Kalorn is the guy they're trying to go to second. But I don't know if 4.45 is enough. That's why I'm thinking it could be Andre Palat that they go to second because he has the 5-3. That gives you a little bit more to play with, uh, where Kalorn, you're definitely not going to get two contracts in, you're probably still not going to get two contracts in, even getting rid of a lot, but maybe if somebody takes a one-year deal and then the other person takes a bridge deal, you can kind of get it in there for this year and then live to figure it out in the future again. Also, yeah. very quick, uh, Perlo, um, one guy that we haven't talked about, maybe Tampa Bay thinking of trading, is Steven Stamkos. Um, because I think it was a couple months ago, um, uh, TSM Bob McKenzie came out saying the only players that are untouchable are the Conn Smythe winner, Victor Hedman, playoff MVP runner-up, Brain Point, Nikita Kucherov, Ski. Steven Stamkos wasn't on the list, and I mean, that's a lot of money that you can clear up right there, $8.5 million. That you could sign Sorelli and Cernak with, and maybe even another depth defenseman, another depth forward, especially since Steven Stamkos hasn't been in their lineup and he's been kind of injured that might be a possibility of maybe trading away Steven Stamkos to a team that might be looking for a guy like Steven Stamkos on their team. Yeah, it's going to completely depend on what that injury is all about and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's a tough trade. Man, is, Stammer really. has been the heart of that team for such a long time. Uh, I I don't know what to say about that. I think you're, you're probably right, but I, I'm going to take a different lean here and go there. They've been waiting a long time to see, like, basically they put Johnson, John, Johnson on waivers, 
kind of knowing nobody was going to take him. But I think it was more to do with the fact that, look, this is a guy. This is a guy we're putting out here as bait. And I know that it's difficult capitalize right now for, for teams to take a player like Johnson, but there are teams out there that have the cap space to have him. And as Joe was saying, higher up in the lineup, he can still be a, a second-line center in the league. Those aren't easy to find. I have a feeling that Tampa Bay is going to hold out, hold out, hold out, hold out, and get some competition going for Johnson because there's a good possibility there could be some competition down the road for him. Yeah, it's easy to say now when the season is so far away where maybe you might be able to figure out some other way or something like that. But when it gets start, get, starts getting closer to, this to the time, and guys, teams like Nashville are still where they are. Minnesota is going in with Benino as their second line center, or maybe Eck. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just thinking, just spitballing some guys off the top of my teams off the top of my head that may go. Well, it is Johnson. <laughs> you know what I mean? His contract yeah, yeah. isn't that bad. He also is a very good defensive center. Um, eventually they may say, okay, you know what, I'll give you a fifth or whatever or something like that. I'll take him off you. They may be holding out for something like that. Barring that to happen, though, um, then like you, like uh, Joe's saying about Kalorn, first of all, we don't even know if they can waive their, if they're willing to waive their NMCs. Um, they got full NMCs from what I understand. That was the biggest problem. Tampa gave full NMCs to everybody, you know. And now you got expansion coming up, and other teams are going. Well, we'll wait till next year, because you're gonna have, who are, there's gonna be guys. What's gonna happen next year with Tampa Bay? They have all these guys on NMC. I don't even know how that works with expansion. They've got so many guys yeah. on NMC that they would they gonna protect guys, and there's gonna be guys unprotected with NMCs. I was just looking. I look. Kalorn has a uh, sixteen team no trade list. And uh, give me two seconds while this loads. Uh, Andre Palat has a uh, hold on, 20-team no trade list. So Kalorn has a 16-team no trade list. Palat submits a 20-team no trade list. Yeah, so they actually could trade them. But it's just they've decided to go with, go with Johnson there. They could trade him. They just have to ask him to. Well, to yeah, to that's because like that. those two are more part of the cream of the crop of what they're still doing. Where, like I was saying, Tyler Johnson, not because of his skill, just because of how stacked Tampa has become, has moved down in the lineup. So he kind of has just been. You always have an odd man out situation. He's just simply that. Nothing against him. It's just you're on a very good stack team that has cap problems. It's just he's the odd man now. What are you going to say there, Peyton? Uh, so for the expansion draft, the only guys that they really have to cover next year is Kucherov, Stamkos, and Hedman because they're the, they're the only guys that have the no movement clause. Um, and they could leave Tyler Johnson out because they, they only have a no trade clause, so the no trade clause isn't right. Part of the expansion draft, so they could leave Tyler Johnson unprotected, and maybe Seattle could take that player. But the problem is, they got to find a fix now to figure out what they're going to exactly. do. Tyler Johnson is not as great as what he used to be. That five million dollar no. contract is not looking good. And if you look at his defensive stats, his defensive stats are not where what he used to be. He had a really bad down year this year. Um, his offense is decent, but when you're trying to say that, like. He's definitely not the greatest defensive player in the world. And he's getting less ice time in Tampa Bay. More players are stepping up. You have Sorelli. You have Point. And you've got already centermans and, and Gordo, too, who does play a little bit of center as well. You already got players that are already stepping over you and Tyler Johnson. He will definitely be the guy that they're going to look to trade. I don't think I see Tyler Johnson being traded away. And... Like Joe was saying, Plot and Gordo, they're definitely the key pieces of the team. They're going to be looking to maybe trade away Kalorn. But with the expansion draft coming up next year, I, I think they'll be okay with salary cap because I think they might even make a deal with Seattle. But right now, they're in, like I said, they're in a, they're in a really crappy situation. Um, even having to try to still sign Sorelli and... Cernak with over $83 million that you already have spent. So we'll have to see what they do um, as they're stuck yeah. in a situation. 
I, Maybe I, uh, Joe Sackick will come in and fleece the hell out of Tampa and somehow. Yeah, get who knows? Those guys <laughs> on Colorado <laughs> that they don't even need. And then they're even <laughs> be more stacked than they already are. <laughs> uh, then, okay, so now with all this, okay, we love, we all love Patrick Maroon, and they, but they signed Patrick Maroon at 900000 It's only 900000 but no. do you find it yeah. do you find it surprising that they would sign somebody like that when they still have all these other things to take care of? It almost seems to me like they do have a plan and they're not too worried about it. Um, does, does, does that what uh, do, do you get that idea as well? Um, I don't know, Patrick Maroon. I. I think they wanted to keep the depth the way that it is. They wanted to have still that little bit of physical pre uh, presence, which Patrick Maroon brings to the team. And especially only making 900 grand, it doesn't hurt your cap space very much, especially if, if you have to send them down. And who knows, maybe Bruce Brawl does have a plan for this Tampa Bay Lightning team with signing Mikhail Shrikachev. Now it's, it's taken the Tampa Bay a very long time to actually give somebody a contract because they only really signed Luke Shen and Patrick Maroon at free agency. And that's all they've really done since then. It's been pretty quiet for Tampa Bay rumors until the Shrigachev move. So maybe they do have a plan. Maybe they're just waiting it out and seeing what other teams are doing because right now we've been stuck in this really, really weird waiting period. It feels like it's August, but it's not really August. August is usually the waiting time for teams until September picks up and then everything starts moving along. All the free agencies that are still in there, like Hoffman, Sammy Batten, and then Zodana Chara, they'll sooner or later start finding teams. But maybe Patrick Maroon is part of the plan of maybe trying to go back to back because Maroon's a great playoff performer. We've seen it before. He's done it with the Oilers. He's done it with the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's done with the St. Louis Blues. Every team he's been on, he's been a great playoff guy. I think that's the reason why Tampa Bay kept him, is to keep being that big veteran presence on the team and to continue helping up the young guys who are definitely going to be coming up in the roster, especially with them dealing with the cap situation that they're doing, right? They're going to have Volkov, who played in the playoffs last year, jump up. Taylor Radish is going to jump up sooner or later. Boris Kachuk, sooner or later, he'll jump up. There's going to be a lot of young players that are going to need that veteran leadership from Patrick Maroon to jump into that depth spots. Joe, what do yeah, you think about I that? Think, uh, yeah, I think Tampa also kept Maroon and other veterans. Uh, they got Goudreau they knew they could hold on to for a couple more years, and Blake Coleman because they saw that was lacking veterans with winning experience when they got swept by Columbus. Mm -hmm. And then they added guys that were tougher, good on the four check, good physical guys with some experience, and look what happened. So, obviously, you want to keep those guys around while you can. They keep that good pedigree in the room, as Peyton was saying. I did look, though, because you brought up before the video about Ryan McDonough. His no-trade clause is only a 12-team list he will not accept the trade to. So, that's really not that plentiful. Oh, wow. So, you probably could trade ryan mcdonough if you wanted to to free up his cap space because that's not a terrible that's a pretty good no trade clause for the tampa bay lightning and i'm assuming ryan mcdonough there's a lot of other teams he would be interested going to he played for the rangers of course for a while maybe he'll be interested coming back up hopefully not to play for the rangers but back up the coast again um to play for somebody uh but you see i think that could be an option now looking that he only has a 12 team list and that's, that's kind of what I was going to go into next. And maybe it does make some sense with the signing of uh, uh, Sergeyev, for sure. Showing and that Cernak, that, you're going to have, yeah. Then, then, you, then, you, sign could sign, then you could sign Cernak, and you've got uh, some young guys that can replace McDonough, which was going to have to be replaced anyways. He's getting up there in age. Uh, he had a strong playoffs, but he did look like he was dipping a bit before that. Mm -hmm. Um so, but yet he's still good enough that I bet that there's a market out there for him, and it definitely would be able to. Now, if that were, let's just say, you know, that that was something that happened. I also wanted to mention signing Maroon. Maybe it might have been foreshadowing that although they were trying to get John, get, remove Johnson, who can play wing as well, that signing Maroon was like a backup plan 
based on the fact that it was likely they weren't going to be able to get rid of Johnson and that they may have to go towards the Palat or Kalorn or something like that. Yeah, and now Maroon is another winger there. To, mm-hmm. And Maroon's played higher up the lineup before. It's not like he can't. He's, he's playing on a fourth line in Tampa because that team is just so bloody stacked. I mean, if he was playing on a lot of teams, he'd be playing on the third, sometimes even the second probably uh, on some teams. So that might be it there too. Um, now, if you were to lose McDonough, let's just say they, they had to go that route, which I don't think is. Now I would say they would have to add maybe more. Um, we have Cal Foot there. What do you, what do you think, uh, Peyton? Do you think they'd have to go back out in the market and look for a defenseman if they were to do something like that? I mean, maybe, but McDonough was already on the downwards trend anyways. He had a pretty rough year in the regular season this year, especially his analytics. You have Mikhail Shurgachev, who's going to be jumping up into that that second left-handed role. And Cernak, who could definitely play some top four action as well. His analytics are, is just absolutely insane alongside of Shurgachev. So you have those future guys. You would probably have to look into the market to pick up some depth defenseman for sure. And maybe even if Cal Foot really jumps up and he plays fantastic, you might not even need to look towards the market. You might not be able to because even if you do trade away McDonough, you're probably going to only be able to afford Sorelli and Cernak. And then you're going to be basically stuck with the cap that you have and the team that you have. So I don't think they're going to look in the market if they do they're going to look to give someone a tryout contract and then someone like the league minimum to play for their team like a Jan Roda maybe bring him back for another year right there's still tons of veteran uh defensemen that they could bring back to the team that could play top six or just be a scratched player to come in once every while like kind of like what Luke Shen was for the Tampa Bay Lightning is what I could see them doing if they do trade away McDonough now, with that contract, who knows? And McDonough's already at 31 years old, so that might be another one that is going to be hard to move off your team, especially since that's going to be going all the way until he's 36, 37 years old. It's a pretty steep contract and probably another one that's going to be hard to move away from. Uh, George, can you think of any guys that would finish off what you were going to say but also add into that any teams out there that might be interested in a guy like McDonough? Um, there's probably a couple, but I was going to say in response to, uh, Hey, yeah, I think there's a likelihood in order to go out and get another defenseman, they're not going to be able to do it with just training McDonough because that is six, seven, five. They would have to still train McDonough. And then if they're able to get rid of Johnson where they move on from a Kalorn, because then you would have money to actually sign mm-hmm. someone like a Vodden or bring in Chara for one year or someone that has more of a staple on defense rather than like a Yannick Weber, who I think if you're going tryout route might not be a bad guy to do tryout route. Um, so it, that's the way uh, th- that you have to go. You have to decide if you want to add another defenseman, if you trade McDonough, it's going to have to be by moving another forward to have the money to add that other defenseman. I do think there's definitely teams that would have um, interest in Ryan McDonough, um, <clears throat> Winnipeg. Um, yep. But yeah. uh and uh, beyond uh, Winnipeg, there's probably other teams. Like, for example, they have a lot of cap space. It's the, it's the question of would they want to pay two defensemen a lot of money. But from covering the Kings for OT heroics, they do get to progress quicker than people give them credit for. Like analysts and experts say they're going to be able to be a key team to compete again. So... If that is your line of thinking, having a Drew Doughty and Ryan McDonough as veterans rather than just one veteran at the top of your defense would not be a bad thing to go for. And the Kings get the most out of their defensemen. So that would probably be a good thing for McDonough's career as well, if that were to happen. Um, so those are just a couple of teams uh, that I thought of um, just from going over off of the top of my head, um, because I don't think any other teams that I really cover in the one side which is the other two california teams would really look for ryan mcdonough because the ducks are not going to look for ryan mcdonough and there's no chance in hell that the sharks are paying another defenseman uh that much money so they're not could have kept ryan mcdonough either so uh i would definitely go with those teams 
because another team, I guess, they have $12 million in cap space. Nobody knows where this team's trying to go if they're still saying that they're competing and they want to go for it. <clears throat> the Predators definitely have enough to face to add them, but nobody knows what the hell the Predators are doing. So it kind of depends what direction the Predators are going because they're kind of in a law period. Payton said the league's in a law and nobody really knows the Predators are conservative buyers, conservative sellers, full-blown sellers, and probably not full-blown buyers because that would be weird mm-hmm. with the team they have. Uh, but that's why that's an interesting team because they got the cap space to do it. Uh, another team that has a cap space to do it that would have about $3 million left over that might make sense because they got rid of a couple defensemen in the offseason. They weren't able to add some of the offensive additions. If Columbus just wants to become a top-notch defensive team and win from their goaltending and defense and then having your offense be the other effort that gets like 3-4 a night to be able to put you over the hump, they could go that route too. It just depends what your team, what you want your team to look like. So. Right. Uh, the word I was looking was foreshadowing, and I think maybe it's possible we saw some foreshadowing before, even when the playoffs, before like before the playoffs started, um, we know they needed grit, but and that okay. was definitely the main focus. But you got Coleman and Goudreau there; they're going to be UFAs next year. You signed Maroon at nine hundred when you were having cap trouble problems already. It would seem to me that in the end, I think they know they're likely going to have to remove a winger to be able to get this cap space, and then next year. Or next year, you can go to Coleman and say, hey, we got some room now. You want to stick around? Coleman could fill out Kaloran's spot. Uh, Goudreau has shown some offensive ability, although I wouldn't really want him in my top six. But, I mean, it's not the end of the world with all the rest of their top six if they were to go that direction. So I think they gave themselves some options, and it was very well thought out. Uh, Breezeball has, again, done a, fan, a really mm-hmm. good job with this team as a whole. Coming, taking Eisenman's building and and doing very good with it from there. Hopefully, he gets some credit somewhere down the road because he certainly does deserve it. Well, guys, this has been absolutely fantastic. Peyton on the radio, and uh, Joe from SteelFlyers.com and uh, Sports Fanatic News always bringing you the pearls. These guys, you guys watch the stuff and you go, my gosh, how do they know all this? I don't even know. They just they just let me join them every once in a while. They're amazing. <laughs> Great guys. Thank you very much for coming in and talking about Tampa. This has been a lot of fun. Peyton, what are you off to now, buddy? Uh, I'm going to be returning my camera equipment and then uh, probably making some more YouTube videos and doing some homework. So, What's yeah, your what next about... one? What's your next video you do? My next one is a Seattle Kraken franchise mode video. It's the Stanley Cup Finals between the Washington Capitals and the Kraken. Uh, the Kraken are looking to make history as uh, it could be the fastest Stanley Cup ever won by an expansion draft team. Uh, we're going into our second year. We might be able to bring it home. So hopefully that's a possibility. There you go. If you like the gaming, go over there to Peyton. Uh, and uh, Joe, what do you got going on now, buddy? Um, well, uh, I'd probably just go to pretty much relax. Uh, I have a couple videos planned for the weekend. Uh, one's an Eagles. I always do an Eagles look ahead, even though they're abysmal. Uh, and then another's are going to be a uh, free agent videos on NHL players and certain baseball players of where they might go talking about uh, cap space for the particular teams and saying if it's more likely, obviously the cap space structure involves more of the NHL videos since baseball doesn't have a flat cap, but uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be doing on the weekend, as well as writing a lot of articles. So stay tuned for my Twitter at JJBorek26 to be sharing a bunch of different articles I write in the next couple of weeks or so on a bunch of hockey, baseball, and a couple NFL topics. Yeah, the Eagles look ahead is sort of like uh, the weatherman in Dubai. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's going to be hot. And Eagles are going to lose. Those are the two things that are going to happen. Well, that's my full 42, yeah. boys and girls. It's like that Family Guy episode. What is it? I think that was Family It's going to rain. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's going to rain. Okay, bye. Back to you, Bill. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, subscribe to all these guys, too. And have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.